Hello everybody and welcome to today's session. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce today's presenter, Nick Barber. Uh, for those who don't know Nick, uh, Nick is an analyst at Forrester Research, specializing in video technologies and research reports on how companies can use online video platforms for sales and marketing operations. But more importantly, recently Nick uh, has become the digital asset management expert at Forrester Research. And one of his first publications will be the um, Dan van der Linscape that is that will soon be published. Um, so actually, we are in luck today because Nick will already share his findings and the highlights of this report before it's actually being published. So there we're very lucky. Um, a, record, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our site tomorrow, and you will all get a notification where to find it. And on top of that, of course, you will receive a copy of the, re the report I mentioned, the Dam van der Landscape, as soon as it's published. Of course, we'd love to hear from you. Any feedback, questions are welcome. You are muted at this stage, but we'll address all questions at the end of the webinar. You can drop your comments and your questions in the box at the right-hand side of your screen. So with further ado, without further ado, Nick, the floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy days to spend a little bit of it with me and with uh, some of the trends that we're going to be looking at that are disrupting the digital asset management market. As Jan mentioned, I'm an analyst at Forrester, and I focus on uh, video technologies as well as digital asset management, and I find those two uh, technologies complementing each other very well. Uh, of course, if you'd like to follow me, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Nick JB. Uh, you can uh, tweet me any comments as well uh, on this webinar. So let's jump right in. Uh, this picture, I think, really sets the stage for what digital asset management used to be. It used to be this place where your assets went, and they basically collected dust. They collected dust, and they aged. And now, digital asset management is getting a new life because it's really becoming a dynamic delivery mechanism and we're going to get into why that is in just a bit but what i want to do is dispel this myth that digital asset management is where your assets go to collect dust and where they go to die they're actually really going into the dam to 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 live a new life and to really sit between that upstream creative workflow uh, and downstream delivery mechanisms. So why has DAM really created this new life? Well, there are a couple of business and functionality challenges that have emerged in the DAM space that's precipitated DAM's relevance and precipitated uh, additional increases in spending in digital asset management. So uh, just a couple of them, we've actually identified eight in some of our other research, but since we're not focusing on that, I really just wanted to use this as, as a way to set the stage and highlight some of the key important ones before we move into the damn disruptors. So first of all, multiple business users need access to content. It's not just marketing creatives that need access to the dam, but now it might be sales, it might be legal. Uh, rich media is becoming more essential to businesses. We know that video is so, so important because it's such an engaging medium for businesses. As are images, as are compound documents like Photoshop and Illustrator documents that, that integrate in multiple different uh, sources of, of imagery. Firms need advanced search, metadata, and taxonomy capabilities. Uh, businesses are creating more content than ever, and that creates a challenge from search and discoverability of that content. So advanced search, metadata, and taxonomy are much, much more important to businesses now, now that they've created all that content. Companies need to scale from both an asset and a globalization perspective. So this fits in with the third bullet point, the bullet point that I just mentioned around how companies are creating more content. So they need a better way to distribute it, both internally and externally into those downstream delivery channels. So uh, from a globalization perspective, Organizations are looking to localize content. Maybe that's in local language, so it's customizing content. And that's something that the dam can do as well. 
And brands ultimately want to avoid legal problems. So some of the companies that we've talked to have used the dam uh, to take advantage of uh, uh, content expiration dates, so to take down content that they are no longer legally able to uh, surface publicly. And uh, this is becoming a greater and greater concern around organizations, especially with the use of imagery. Uh, photographers can put content up on the web and hope that brands basically take it and 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 use it so that they can send them a big a big bill uh, basically the dam is is mitigating that and allowing brands to use content that they have the rights for that they have rights that are current for and ultimately saving them time money and legal headaches dam appeals to a wider range of content creators we asked a, a question back in uh, 2015 of content marketers and how are they using dam in the context of their digital marketing now these are specific to uh, users of content marketing platforms but we see a growth in DAM and DAM uh, talking to uh, a, a wider range of content creators. So in this question we said, does your company use uh, digital asset management in its digital marketing? And 60% of those content marketers said that they are either using it or they plan to use it in the next 12 months. And this speaks specifically to our convergence and our integration trends that we're seeing in the market in that a dam is appealing to a wider range of users. And then we asked last year uh, of digital experience delivery decision makers, what investments are the highest priorities for customer facing web and mobile initiatives? And I would argue that almost all of the responses in this, uh, in this survey or in the, in, the, in the top of the survey, can align with DAM trends and how DAM serves the market. So we're talking about redesigning the user experience. So DAM often delivers content downstream to those delivery channels like uh, web content management and uh, campaigns and email and e-commerce and things along those lines. So fitting in very, very well in there. How, how about delivering personalized experiences? Again, DAM aligning with that trend. Implementing or expanding customer service capabilities and improving integrations with backend systems. Also, uh, things that DAM uh, is, is important. Look at uh, some of the other things like using the cloud more. We're seeing a shift uh, to cloud and to software as a service uh, for DAM. So all of these things uh, are very top of mind for digital experience delivery decision makers, and we see them aligning very, very closely with digital asset management. So before we get into the trends, uh, I wanted to take a look at where we see DAM positioning itself today. So if we look at uh, sort of DAM kind of as a center, as a central hub uh, for that content, we have on the left, we have the upstream creative technologies, and on the right, we have the downstream delivery mechanisms. And, and I see DAM, and Forrester sees DAM, really as a central hub for content. Because on the left-hand side, we might have things like review and approval that DAM enables. We might have things like creative tool set integration a brand portal for maybe not your marketing power users, but perhaps your business users who need to find a logo or an image or uh, perhaps even a, a document uh, or a video to uh, download and integrate into uh, some, of their, uh, some of their workflows. Tasks, this is becoming a really, really uh, a growing need inside of the dam as it, as it uh, converges with marketing resource management tools uh, so that we can start to assign tasks to different creatives inside of the dam and make sure and check in and see uh, whether they are, uh, where they are in that process. Now we move to the downstream delivery channels like online video platforms e-commerce, 
email. Web content management is one of the biggest ones that we see. And product information management. Uh, so again, DAM really serving as that central hub and integrating with the upstream creative channels and the downstream delivery mechanisms. Oh, and also print, let's not forget that. It's not just uh, the online and the digital that DAM serves, but it's print as well. So why is DAM appealing for many enterprises? Well, it, we're starting to, this picture is starting to come together for us. First of all, it reduces content recreation costs. Because the DAM serves as the single source of truth for assets, you now have one place to go in your entire enterprise uh, to look for that, that single asset. Increased operational efficiency. So things like uh, distributing content downstream or understanding where it is in the creative workflow. Improving brand consistency. Again, going back to this idea of a single source of truth for your logos, for your marketing content, and making sure that everyone is using approved assets in their customer-facing, in their public-facing uh, uh, sites, uh, whether it's mobile, whether it's uh, desktop, uh, whether it's print. Improve rights management and compliance, especially we see this when legal needs to come in and review uh, specific assets or specific collateral. We also see it, again, going back to that idea of avoiding legal expenses around um, uh, things like imagery uh, um, and making sure that they uh, stay available uh, there. So, damn, prepare to be disrupted. These are the five factors that have or will disrupt DAM. So the first thing that we see as the biggest disruptor uh, in terms of DAM is really a shift to the cloud. So finally, uh, platform as a service and software as a service deployments will be in vogue. Uh, for a long time, uh, DAM was really a on-premise uh, proposition for a lot of companies. And what that means is that there is a heavy burden on IT, uh, it doesn't scale or deploy as easy as something that's in the cloud. So we're seeing that finally, uh, that, that shift occurring. Enterprises can deploy rapidly, run on the latest code, doesn't mean that they have to uh, manage those updates locally, again taking some of the burden off of that local IT staff. Uh, scale and replace those capital expenses with more operating ones. And uh, we often get the question, you know, I'm in healthcare or I'm in financial services. Can we really move to the cloud when it comes to our DAM? And because DAM serves marketing, so we're talking about public-facing assets. We're not talking about personally identifiable data. We're not talking about healthcare records. Our response is yes, regulated industries can move to the cloud when it comes to DAM because those are public-facing marketing assets. Now, where, do, where, where does DAM fit in this story? So if we plot along our x-axis, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and then on our y-axis, the ability to customize the DAM and the cloud benefits, we see your ability to customize and integrate drop off as you move to software as a service, and the cloud benefits increase as you move away from a more on-prem or infrastructure as a service. This is where we sort of see ourselves today, a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, that's sort of the sweet spot today is in the platform shifting towards software as a service. One of the things that we expect to happen is in the future, software as a service be able to uh, be more on par with platform as a service in terms of the ability to integrate uh, and customize, plus also the cloud benefits. Today, I would say that we're more uh, more in the bottom right of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, proposition rather than uh, rather than somewhere else. But we see more customization and 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 uh, the cloud benefits really uh, fitting in there as we move into tomorrow. 
what are most important when selecting a solution? Again, this idea of cloud, look at that, number three, going back to this digital experience delivery decision maker piece. Uh, being able to deploy in the cloud is something that is very, very important. Uh, using best of breed applications, easy to integrate front end components, all of these things align with the damn trends that we're seeing. And we, we wanted to bring in this data to make sure that uh, it reinforces some of the trends that we're talking about. Convergence. So uh, finally, we're seeing these markets come together like web content management and PIM and campaign management. And, and all of them begin to offer embedded DAM functionality. And that's really important for users of the DAM. Um, uh, even though uh, we see a lot of lightweight players um, or, or niche vendors uh, put on the chopping block because of this. So vendors that offer not much more than cloud storage uh, should be concerned about their viability because it's these uh, this convergence of the market that's really offering uh, multiple capabilities in one uh, be very important moving forward. So we see MRM and DAM converging the fastest. No surprise here. We have uh, a Primo's acquisition of Atom software uh, that 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 very clearly demonstrates this market convergence. We still see uh, uh, strengths in each, but they are beginning to converge and offer some of the key capabilities there. So for example, MRM is still very much focused in some of the things like budgeting, but we're starting to see some of the MRM capabilities like tasks and review and approval start to make their way into, into DAM. And also content marketing platforms as well uh, are starting to integrate some of the DAM capabilities that we've seen uh, really um, things, like, uh, things like content collaboration and workflows and approval and really analytics. Uh, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about as one of the key trends as well uh, that content marketing platforms are beginning to uh, take flavors, uh, they're starting, starting to trade some of the capabilities from DAM and content marketing platforms like some of the ones that you see on this chart. We still see DAM be very strong in things like library services and rights management and creative collaboration going up to those upstream creative workflows. But we're starting to see uh, as enterprises begin to focus more and more externally and getting more of that content that they create out faster at a faster pace and a faster speed and scale, uh, some of the capabilities there uh, be very, very attractive to, to companies. All right, into trend number three, analytics. Uh, it's not just a, uh, a spray and pray mentality anymore in marketing where uh, you can uh, just hope that your content does well. Uh, we want to know specifically down uh, to a, a, a analytics and a metric, metrics level, where is this content going and how is, how is it performing? And also, who is using that content? So it's not just analytics from an external perspective, but it's analytics from an internal perspective as well of, of who is using this content. So uh, business users, they want insights of where and how assets are used and, and what their performance is. This can be really important when, say you're a retailer and you want to know uh, what designs, what clothing designs, what, you know, what line of apparel or what line of products should we focus on next year or the following year? Well, if we can understand what our performance was this year and what our historic performance was, then we are uh, more better positioned to go to market in the future if we can understand uh, where we are currently or where we are previously. And that's where we see analytics in the dam becoming very, very important. Also things like 
pushing out videos from the dam into YouTube or Facebook with those analytics flowing back in and understanding not just from a, a view standpoint, views are relatively easy to integrate, but what about those other metrics like engagement on social platforms or view time uh, that is so important in determining our success around video. Integrations also very, very important. So when we talk, think back to our uh, slide that we talked about just a little while ago when we talked about how DAM positioned itself as a central hub. The integrations piece is very important from integrating into upstream creative workflows. So we're talking about things like integrating into creative tool sets like uh, say, for example, being able to open and edit a file from the dam into, say, Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, uh, editing that file, saving it, and then it uploading back into the dam so that you preserve that asset as the single source of truth. Um, then let's take, let's take a look into the downstream delivery channels like Say, for example, web content management, having that speed of delivery and that capability to deliver assets and experiences down to uh, desktop, mobile, and other types of uh, delivery pieces. So um, when we look at integrations, we see them in the context of our customer life cycle. Now, if you think back to any major purchase that you've made recently, you could probably identify with all six of these steps, well, six, all six of these steps, discover, explore, buy, use, ask, and engage. Uh, that's probably all of the things that you went through uh, during that most recent purchase. But one of the problems with thinking in that customer life cycle is often that silos prevent these great experiences. And we see a lot of these pieces now integrating into the dam so that uh, our marketers and our uh, different lines of business and our business users and our power users can take advantage of the different content flowing out of these silos and, and integrating them into the dam. Uh, again, really solidifying digital asset management's uh, uh, position as a central hub and again integrating into creative workflows reviews and approvals and then into downstream delivery technologies like web content management e-commerce email campaigns and all of those things uh, that flow there integrations is the only way that that can happen and one of my favorite trends in DAM, and really in the industry in general, is this idea of artificial intelligence. Uh, I think AI and machine learning really, really has the ability to transform not just the DAM space, not just the marketing space, but I think it has the, the ability to transform a lot of industries in general. Now, with the caveat that we need to crawl before we can walk and we need to walk before we can run in terms of artificial intelligence. Is artificial intelligence going to solve all of your business problems today? No, of course not. Will it solve them uh, a couple of years down the road? Probably not because there's going to, there are going to be other business challenges that present themselves that aren't presenting themselves today. But can it help you today? Yes, certainly it can, and, I, and I'll explain why in my next slide. But what we're seeing with artificial intelligence is things like uh, Google Vision, Azure Vision, AWS Recognition. All of them can help surface relevant metadata and tags, which can really streamline your ingestion uh, process and improve your metadata government, governance. And what do I mean by this? Now, if you're, if you're a power user, if you're someone who is uploading content to your dam, uh, you may have a lot of fields that you need to populate with metadata. You may need to select uh, taxonomy. 
you may need to uh, surface content in there uh, to make it more findable for your users. Now, if you require 10 or 20 fields of metadata in order to upload your asset, not only are you slowing down the asset ingestion process, but you're, making, you're, you're driving down adoption. No one wants to spend time filling out uh, dozens of metadata fields that may not even be used in search. Or perhaps you didn't have those fields required and you have a large library of content that you're trying to back your way into for metadata and search. And you need to categorize tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of assets that have not much more than a file name. Well, enter today's artificial intelligence. It can uh, quickly tag high level uh, it can quickly provide high-level metadata and tags. Now, I'm going to give you an example here before we uh, get towards the close and before we start to uh, talk about some of the questions that have arisen during this presentation. But I want to give you an example of where artificial intelligence is today and where it could go in the future. So the point here is that artificial intelligence has one big challenge. Now, I have a picture here. I'm a car guy. Uh, this is a picture of a Ford Mustang. Now, if I fed this into my dam and I applied artificial intelligence to it, it might present me with a couple of tags for this content. Say, for example, car or automobile and maybe vehicle, certainly transportation as well. These are the types of tags that artificial intelligence of today can look at images and provide you. Now, if there was no metadata associated with this image, this might be really helpful for me in my dam as I begin to search for images or content. You know, replace this with whatever resonates in your specific business. I used a car because it's something that we can all relate to. But these are the high level tags that AI is ready to provide us today. Now, what is really important to businesses are these business specific tags. So these are tags that are unique to your business. And these are tags that AI is not yet able to surface. These might be tags like sports car. They might be tags like Mustang. So AI can't look at this car and tell me that it's a Mustang. It can tell me it's a car. It can't tell me that it's a Mustang. Hardtop. So if I'm looking in my dam for an image of a convertible and I type in convertible, AI wouldn't be able to tell me if it's a convertible it would be able to tell me it if I entered it myself, but not from AI. Or 5.0 liter, maybe you're an auto dealer and or a, a car maker and you need to surface specific images. Again, think of this in the context of your business. Think of an image that is unique to your business and think what are the tags that artificial intelligence would tell me today? And think about the tags that are business specific that I would need to enter myself or I would need to wait a couple of years for AI to catch up. And say 21 inch wheels. Maybe I'm looking for a very specific car or a very specific configuration to deliver to my mobile experience or deliver to my website. Um, these again on the right hand side are the ones that are business specific. On the left hand side, these are ones that AI can deliver today. So that is a very high level look at some of the key trends in digital asset management that we see today, Forrester. And as Jan mentioned, we are very, very close to publishing our digital asset management vendor landscape that looks at some of the high level trends in the market and how the digital asset management vendors are embracing those trends. And those will be, uh, that'll be published in the next couple of weeks. And as Jan mentioned, that'll be made available to uh, 
to everyone here on this on this webinar. So those are some of the high level trends that we've identified in the market. And now I want to pause and open it up to some of the questions from our uh, from our audience. So if you've been thinking about uh, how do these trends align with my business, or can these trends help my business, or Maybe there's a specific trend that you want to know more about or, or how you could specifically take advantage of it. Now is the time to ask. Let's open the floor, Jan. Yes. Thank you, um, Nick. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, as mentioned at the beginning of this call, you can drop your questions or comments in either the chat or the question box at the right hand side of your screen. Meanwhile, some questions have already come in and uh, uh, as you mentioned, the the, uh, the first uh, disruptor cloud uh, already uh, raised uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one is that um, how easy it is to keep integrating them in with the rest of the marketing technology stack while moving most of these applications to the cloud because it's not only them, it's only of, obviously also other applications going to the cloud. So the question is actually are the integration disruptor and the cloud disruptor contradictory or just or even or strengthening themselves I, I certainly think it's the latter it is strengthening it is it is not contradictory uh, maybe uh, a few years ago when the story around SaaS deployments weren't as strong but we are seeing the shift to the cloud um, accelerate and we are seeing the shift to the cloud uh, like we looked at in that one graph that was basically the crosshairs uh, of the market. So we are seeing the, the ability to integrate and customize tick upward towards something that might be, um, you know, might be closer to what we see as a uh, platform as a service or infrastructure as a service today. We are seeing uh, the SaaS deployments be able to better integrate um, and that's why we've identified both cloud and integrations as a key trend, a key disruptor in the dam market going forward. So I think it's definitely that, Jan. It's definitely the the latter of the two. It's okay. it's cloud and integrations are strengthening. Uh, it's it's not contradictory or or a weakening proposition. Okay, thank you. Um, another one was around investments, and it seems uh, some of the attendees have troubles or challenges quantifying their dam investment or at least the ROI on their dam investment. So there are quite some ROI calculators available on, on vendor uh, sites, but how would you suggest for an enterprise to go forward in, in calculating their dam ROI? Yeah, so I think it's, it's a few things. Um, so it is, uh, as we've outlined, uh, we have some, um, as we've outlined, there are operational efficiencies that are created in the upstream creative workflow and the downstream delivery mechanisms. So a couple of things. Uh, from determining the ROI of assets, uh, perhaps it could be easy as surveying some of your users and saying, you know, what's some of the biggest challenges around finding some of the content that you need to find? Is it that it takes time? Is it that search isn't uh, very good? Is it that you don't know where to look? Maybe our assets are, are strewn across multiple systems and there's not that single source of truth. Maybe it's asking some of your uh, employees, how much time do you think it takes you uh, to, um, to find any given asset? And if they say, oh, well, it takes us, you know, every time we need to find something, it takes five or 10 minutes and then even then, I'm not able to find it. I have to go out to you know some of one one of our uh, you know content librarians and ask them, and then it takes up their time. Uh, multiply that out by the number of assets that your employees need to find. Multiply that out uh, times your number of employees, and you get a rough idea of how much time they spend just searching for those assets. Um, and then we, we we've done uh, ROI case studies. Uh, that that you know, based on the size of your organization and the number of assets, uh, DAM creates a number of operational e efficiencies uh, to cut down on all of that wasted time from employees. You, know, you ask about you ask about ROI calculators on on DAM vendors sites. Uh, that's certainly a good 
spot to start, but it's not, and, and I would encourage users to do that, um, but it is not what, um, it, 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 it won't give you a customized answer to your specific business. We're, we're, but we're certainly seeing operational efficiencies increase uh, in terms of ROI, and even the legal concerns. Uh, legal concerns are going significantly down inside of the dam because we're able to add asset expiration dates inside of the dam, and all of those assets can be called back or, um, or, or taken out of the public eye so that we're not violating any sort of copyright or agreement that we have with some of the companies that we've licensed them with. Uh, so right there, from an operational efficiency around search, around finding the right asset, around reducing legal concerns, which are very, very real uh, for organizations today, uh, just those two. Uh, are are significant offer significant cost savings to businesses. Okay, thank you, Nick. Another question is more around around integrations and actually also market consolidation. Um, seeing the huge number of different marketing technologies and the huge number of vendors in each each space, how do you see that playing out? And maybe on, on another question on top of that or related to that is. Will there be actually a dam only vendor in the next three years or do you expect most of them will become part of an MRM, WCM, CMP or other offering? So let me, let me start with that one, the, the latter half of the question uh, around do I see dam only vendors uh, in the next couple of years? And I think the, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, yes, I, I certainly see dam only vendors. Uh, but what I see happening is along the lines of the convergence that we talked about as one of the key trends in DAM. And what I mean by that is that DAM will start to integrate uh, capabilities from adjacent technologies, like we're seeing with DAM taking on some of the MRM, or marketing resource management capabilities, or as we see DAM taking on some of the content marketing uh, platform capabilities. Uh, all of those are uh, key, integra key, key pieces of, uh, key points of convergence uh, inside, of, inside of the uh, DAM platform uh, because it makes the DAM more useful. Uh, and, and, and I see, uh, I, I, I certainly see DAM only vendors in a few years time, but I see them growing the capabilities to make the dam more useful by integrating some of those uh, components that we see from MRM and content marketing platforms and even uh, things like WCM as well. Okay, thank you. Then um, more around the, I would say the scope of them is how do you see the future of them uh, and if that's going beyond servicing marketeers only so also for instance field sales in retail to provide shop planograms uh, promotional material contracts with specific shops and so on and so on yes 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 and yes uh, I, I think dam uh, was born to serve a purpose inside of um, marketing departments and marketing teams and to work between marketing departments and say agencies externally but I think that DAM is really we're, we're, we're already seeing it happen and I think DAM is poised to go even further outside of the marketing department so we we talk about DAM in the flavor of kind of three different ways uh, marketing or departmental specific uh, media and entertainment which we're we're not touching on today uh, that's its own use case uh, and then also enterprise-wide and and as we if we think back to one of my first slides of why is DAM, why, why is DAM what it is today and why is it growing? It's because it's becoming more relevant to business users outside of the marketing department. So it could be things like, uh, again, legal, reviewing that content, sales, uh, knowing where to go to get the content when they are meeting with customers and prospects. It could be things like, um, uh, things along those lines uh, to make the dam more useful, more appealing. Again, going back to that idea of, of single source of truth. I think it's important though 
to understand that not everyone who uses the dam will be a power user. There will be certain business users who use the dam as well, and, and that's really important to understand and to make a distinction between the two, because the marketers need uh, some of the more advanced capabilities, whereas the business users need basically search, the ability to you know, add items. They need uh, the ability to um, download assets. Uh, they need the ability to create a shopping cart uh, and things along those lines. So um, what, what we see a lot of uh, companies doing now is creating brand portals that are basically portals so that the, the business users can access content uh, separate from the power users. And maybe it's a curated set of assets, it's not the entire library, and maybe it's reduced functionality so that it's easier for them, uh, but certainly DAM is moving beyond marketing teams and marketing departments to really enterprise-wide uh, deployments because of uh, its importance. Okay, thank you. And then, conscious of time, a last question, and also related to the last topic you touched upon in the presentation, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, is there any leader in that AI um, or asset identification market that you mentioned Google and Azure Vision and AWS recognition. There seem also be to be vendors or players like Gray Meta, VU Media and Aris. Is there one company or are there companies that have an advantage and are, are clearly leaders in that space? So we have um, we have analysts uh, who who focus specifically on artificial intelligence. Uh, so that that might fall a little bit more under their coverage than mine. We see artificial intelligence as a uh, a capability and a feature of digital asset management, but not something uh, one of its own. Now, the reason why I listed uh, Google, AWS, and Azure inside of uh, my presentation is because as uh, uh, dams move to the cloud, they're often moving to the cloud with you know one of those options and they have APIs the three of those companies have APIs that integrate into into dam now of course there are other there are certainly other vendors playing in the AI space uh, but what we're seeing specific to dam is that as dam moves to the cloud and as dam has a stronger cloud story they're typically using one of those three flavors that offer those vision APIs now one of the things that's good for end users is that in the short term we see that AI piece becoming a little bit more commoditized because if you look across you know the three of those capabilities and and we think back to our Mustang example they're able to give us those basic tags today where I think the key differentiation is going to be in the AI market as it specifically relates to dam I think it's going to be in the providing business specific tagging and the first vendor that can provide business specific tagging either out of the box which is going to be very difficult or through training which that basically that means is feeding your assets into the dam to train it to say this is a Mustang and this is a pickup truck uh, that is going to be something that's really important and that business specific tagging is something that we're really not seeing uh, at least mainstream in the commercial market, uh, but it's something that we anticipate is going to going to happen, and when it does, that is going to really be revolutionary for uh, for multiple industries, dam specifically, because it's able to surface that business specific tags uh, that we we have so wanted to, and really uh, uh, now and and in a couple of years still need to rely on humans for. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you very much for the presentation. I uh, would like to thank the audience and all the people present for listening in. And as mentioned at the beginning, you'll get a link to the recording and to the Dan van der Landscape uh, report uh, uh, well, to, uh, uh, soon. Uh, for the recording, that will be tomorrow and for the report as soon as it's, as it's been published. Again, thank you very much and enjoy your day. Goodbye.